Friends, how's it going? It's been a while since you've probably seen me. I've been kind of busy this last month. I had a lot of personal issues to take care of, but now that it's all done, I'm ready to do some more streaming. And I got a fun one for you guys today. So, as you can tell by the title, we're back on Magic, and we're going to be playing some Pioneer. Um, the reason why we're playing some Pioneer today is because in a couple weeks, I'm going to be playing this deck at a tournament here near my um, here in central Pennsylvania. Um, and this is right up my alley. Green White Slesnia Angels. This is a powerful deck. This right here is fun. And it's a bunch of big flyers and a bunch of life gain. Honestly, this is all up my alley. I love playing big creatures. I love life gain. And why not have a bunch of flyers? This is also a collected company deck, which I love playing those co collected company decks. Um, but here we go. We're going to just have some fun. We're going to play a couple matches and hopefully get some good wins for you guys. Please make sure to follow me here on Twitch. And please make sure to also follow me on YouTube. Without further ado, let's get into the deck. All right, so green, white, angels. This is a 60 card main deck, 15 card sideboard deck. And let me get into it for you. Starting off with the lands, we have 23 lands that we're working with today. And our first land is Boseju who endures. We also have the Branch Loft Pathway, four copies. This is also a flip. This is a flip land between green and white. If it's on the white side, it's called Voter Loft Pathway. We have four copies of Brushland. This is one of those paint lands, and it helps out a lot. We have one copy of Cavern of Souls. This is for our angels. That way we can cast angels better. We also are uh, playing one copy of Injanjo, Seat of the Empire. We have four copies of Razorverse Thicket. This is one of those fast lands that enters the battlefield uh, tab unless you control two or other lands. For the basic lands, we only are running four basics. We are running four... Uh, Basic planes. In this version, they're just snowy planes. We have no snow creatures in this deck, but um, who can't go wrong with snow? And finally, our last land that we're going to be working with is four copies of Temple Garden. I know if I was playing this deck in modern, I would have four copies of Windswept Heath as search lands, but unfortunately, search lands are illegal in Pioneer. Now this card might actually be getting a little bit weird seeing it in an angel deck, but we have four copies of Lionor Elves. Just a one mana, one one green elf that taps for green mana. This is more or less a ramp card that's going to help us get into our bigger creatures. Next we have three copies of Gaeta, Font of Hope. Gaeta, Font of Hope is a two mana, two two angel with flying and vigilance. And it reads, each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. And you can tap her to spend, to add a white mana, to spend this mana only to cast an angel spell. We're running three copies of Gaeta. We have four copies of Youthful Valkyrie, a two mana, one, three angel with flying. And it reads, whenever another angel enters the battlefield under your control, you put a counter on the youthful Valkyrie. And since we are playing a lot of angels, this angel is going to grow big. The final two drop we're going to be working with is Bishop of Wings. A 2-2 human cleric. That's 1-4. And it reads, whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 4 life. That right there is good. It also reads, when an angel leave, you control dies, you create a 1-1 one, one spirit with to spirit creature token with flying. And Bishop of Wings is very powerful and an angel build. Since all, all of our big creatures are angels, we're going to be dealing with a lot of life gain.
All right, so the next card we're gonna be working with is a three drops. Our first three drop we're gonna go over is Inspiring Overseer. This is a 2-1 Flying Angel that reads, when it enters the battlefield, you gain one life and you draw one card. Not a bad card, we're only three copies. Next is our Righteous Valkyrie. It's a three mana, two, four angel with flying. And it reads, whenever an angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. And as long as your life is seven or more than your starting life, creatures you control get plus two, plus two. This is a two, four angel cleric. Pretty much a big life gain boost. And that's great for us. We need all the life gain we can possibly get. Here's another reason why we're gaining a lot of life. Resputed Angel, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three angel with flying. And it reads, at the beginning of each end step, if you gain 5 or more life this turn, you create a 4-4 four, four angel creature token with flying and vigilance. It also reads here, you can pay 6 mana. Until end of turn, the Splendid Angel gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains life link. So here's what you can do. For six mana, your angel becomes a 5-5 five, five with lifelink and flying. That's great. And then, after you gain that five life, you create an angel. That's also great. You can't go wrong with this card. It is just an absolute great card to play in an angel deck. Our next card that we're going to go over for the final three drop is three copies of Skyclave Apparition. 2-2 two, two, Core Spirit. That reads, when it enters the battlefield, you exile up to target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with mana value 4 or less. And it also reads, when it leaves the battlefield, the exile card's owner creates a XX Blue Illusion creature token or X is the mana of the exile card. I've been seeing this card all over Pioneer. It's very popular and it's very powerful to be a nuisance against other people's stuff. And since a lot of different decks play low cost stuff, this card is perfect. We're running three copies. Next, it's our only four drop, but it's a powerful one. Collected Company. I love Collected Company. And it's a four mana instant. And it reads, you can look at the top six cards of your library. You put two creatures from among them with power three or with mana value three or less. You put them on the battlefield but you then put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in any order. This is great. This card can go off. It makes great creatures pop up out of nowhere. As long as your uh, opponent doesn't have someone uh, negating your instant speed effects, you can do this on their end step. Um, you can do this anytime you want, pretty much. And I love this card so much. And our final card in the main deck is called Kaya's Reconstruction. This is an X and three white sorcery. This is this, uh, he says, look at the top seven cards of your library. This is just like Collected Company. Then you put X artifact or creature cards from uh, with mana value three or less among them onto the battlefield. Then you put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Think of it as Collected Company, um, just with an additional artifacts, which are great. And think of it also as like, a less very expensive money-wise collector company, but it works great. Yes, you can normally pay only like, I don't know, four mana to get one thing, but sometimes, as long as it doesn't get countered, you can maybe boost it up to maybe three things or four things and get something big. But I like this card. There's four copies of it. And that's the 60 cards in our main deck. Now for our sideboard. First off, we are playing three copies of Draineth Magistrate. It says here, your opponent can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. I know why this card is in here. It is because of Is It Phoenix. Phoenix loves to be cast from the graveyard. And this card is per a perfect counter for Phoenix decks. Then there's also two copies of Rest in Peace. When Rest in Peace enters the battlefield, you exile all graveyards. And if a card or token will be put into the graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. This affects both my side and my opponent's side. We also have four copies of Archon of Emeria. Archon of Emeria is a 2-3 Archon with flying. 
It says each player can't cast more than one spell a turn. The non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. This is a good thing against Phoenix decks because the Phoenix player needs to have three spells in a turn in order to cast their Phoenix. So this is perfect. That's a perfect counter. We also have four copies of Solemnity. It says players can't get counters and counters can't be placed on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. This is a good card, I think, for like those poison decks and for anything that's like those counters decks. This is a pretty solid card for our sideboard. The final card we have is Settle the Wreckage. I remember back in Standard of Ixalan Standard, I played Settle the Wreckage and I liked that card a lot. And it reads, it's a four mana instant. It says remove all exile creatures. It says exile all attacking creatures target player controls. That player may search the library for not many basic lands. Put those onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And there you have it, folks. That is our 60 card main deck, 15 card sideboard deck that we're going to be working with today. And now, let's go ahead, hop on over to the Pioneer Tournament practice, and give this a try. All right, we got ourselves a player. Let's play. We are going to play first. And we have no land, so we have the mulligan. We have some lands this time. I'm going to keep this. And I'll put back Kaya's Reconstruction, because I don't have enough mana for that. I'll start with a Rage of Birds ticket, and I'll tap it from uh, Line of War Elves and Pass Turn. Okay. Next, I'm going to do uh, Brushland. Into a Bishop of Wings, hurting myself for one. Then I'll go to combat. Then I'll attack with my Lana Elves. Okay, 
brushland. I'll tap the vinyl robes. Actually, I'll do a Gaeta. Fatal push. Okay. That's okay. Youthful Valkyrie. Okay, that's a good card. So I'm going to do a Temple card and untapped. A tap, a tap for the Youthful Valkyrie. Oh, he comes in as a 2 4. Now I'm going to do double white, a triple white. Turning myself for 2. Putting a Resputed Angel. Sensor. As I pay one. I can pay one. I cannot. Since I can only cast that for angel spells, dang it. Anywho, we'll go to combat. I'm gonna attack with Gaeta. Now pass turn. Play a Temple Garden tapped, go to combat. I'll attack with everything. And pass. I'm going to draw two cards. Deadly cover up. Destroy all creatures. Ah. I'll play Resputed Angel. Pass turn. Hot sees me for nothing. <laughs> Oops, he has lost two life for nothing. I'll go to combat. I'll attack with the resplendent angel. Can chain that. We collected company. Ah, cool. Now, now I got nothing again.
So now I'll try Akaya's Reconstruction. It's probably going to get countered. Oh, uh, Memory Deluge. Okay. All right, I can get Bishop of Wings and Gaeta. And I'll gain some life. Now what? Okay. Play a Bishop of Wings. Okay. Now I guess I'll go to combat. Attack for two. I'll attack for two. Shark Typhoon. I'll do a dish for wings. Try to put out this youthful Valkyrie and gain some life back. Sweet. That's all I can do this turn. Another memory that they lose.
Let me try this inspiring overseer. Gina Life and Jala card. Perfect. I'm going to go to combat and I'll attack with my youthful Valkyrie. Me hook massacre, oh great. Now they're gonna gain four life, I get three spirits, thankfully. Shark type figure. Sci fi shark. Back with all my creatures.
Not tag. Is getting pretty close? I'm just gonna pass. I can't really attack right now. And by the way, this is only our game one. <laughs> I'm trying to memory dilute yep, memory delusion graveyard. Hmm, I guess we can't find anything. Hmm, this might help actually. As long as my opponent doesn't counter it. I'm gonna try to get rid of his meat hood massacre. Okay. Not attacking this turn, but I might attack next turn. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I 
I need to find some good cards now because I could possibly lose. More shark typhoons. I have 13 damage looking at me right now. Great. Well, if he makes this a 7-7, seven, seven, and then this can be called 3-3. Three, three. Oh, boy. Or not. Take two time. Me something good. Our son, oh boy. So it looks like we're working with the graveyard deck. Um, what I'm going to do is go down one Overseer, one Kaios Reconstruction, and maybe a lot of Elf. I'm replacing that with an Archon of Amiria and two Rest in Pieces. I'll run it back. Let's try to get this win. My opponent only has about nine minutes left on their timer. Or about eight and a half minutes. Maybe we can stall them out. I'm gonna keep. I'll play a Temple Garden Tats. Their turn. Play Gallego. Pass turn. Oh well.
They're gonna try to blow up my land. Um, poop. Oh, I guess one thing. Okay. Well, at least I get to gain some life and draw a card. And I'm gonna destroy that. I get a basic planes out of that. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Kaiser reconstruction for five. I got two Respeeding Angels. I'll go to combat, I'll attack Narset. Need a mascot for three. That was a good help right there.
down to the wire and know if I can beat my opponent. You know, the opponent only has like two minutes left. Oh boy, they're getting pretty tight. might win this game and I might win the match too because my opponent's going to time out they're out of time I win Hey, so it's me again. So we're going to stop playing for right now. I have to do something. So I want to thank H and one of every one of you for watching this little stream. I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye.